welcome students to the Rashmi's classes. Today's we'll discuss on NCERT class 12 biology. Insert class 12 chapter 1. Sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Double fertilization. After entering one of the synergids, the pollen tube releases the two malagametes into the cytoplasm of the synergid. One of the male gametes moves towards the egg cell and fuses with its nucleus thus completing the syngamy. This results in the formation of a diploid cell, the zygote. The other male gamete moves towards the two polar nuclei located in the central cell and fuses with them to produce a triploid primary endosperm nucleus, pen, figure 1.13a. As this involves the fusion of three haploid nuclei itis termed triple fusion. Since two types of fusions, syngamy, and triple fusion take place in an embryo sac the phenomenon is termed double fertilization, an event unique to flowering plants. The central cell after triple fusion becomes the primary endosperm cell, PEC, and develops into the endosperm while the zygote develops into an embryo. Post-fertilization, structures and events Following double fertilization, events of endosperm and embryo development, maturation of ovule, S, into seed, S, and ovary into fruit, are collectively termed post-fertilization events. Endosperm Endosperm development precedes embryo development. Why? The primary endosperm cell divides repeatedly and forms a triploid endosperm tissue. The cells of this tissue are filled with reserve food materials and are used for the nutrition of the developing embryo. In the most common type of endosperm development, the pen undergoes successive nuclear divisions to give rise to free nuclei. This stage of endosperm development is called free nuclear endosperm. Subsequently, cell wall formation occurs and the endosperm becomes cellular. The number of free nuclei formed before cellularization varies greatly. The coconut water from tender coconut that you are familiar with is nothing but free nuclear endosperm, made up of tau sands of nuclei and the surrounding white kernel is the cellular endosperm. Endosperm may either be completely consumed by the developing embryo, example p, ground nut, beans, before seed maturation or it may persist in the mature seed, e.g. castoronde coconut, and be used up during seed germination. Split open some seeds of castor, peas, beans, ground nut, fruit off coconut, and look for the endosperm in each case. Find out whether the endosperm is persistent in cereals, wheat, rice and maize. 1.4.2 Embryo Embryo develops at the micropelar end of the embryo sac where the zygote is situated. Most zygotes divide only after certain amount of endosperm is formed. This is an adaptation to provide assured nutrition to the developing embryo. Thought as seeds differ greatly, the early stages of embryo development, embryogeny, are similar in both monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Figure 1.13 depicts the stages of embryogeny in a dicotyledonous embryo. The zygote gives rise to the proembryo and subsequently to the globular, heart-shaped and mature embryo. A typical dicotyledonous embryo, figure 1.14a, consists of an embryonal axis and two cotyledons. The portion of embryonal axis above the level of cotyledons is the epicotyl which terminates with the plumule or stem tip. The cylindrical portion below the level of cotyledons is hypocotyl that terminates at its lower end in the radical or root tip. The root tip is covered with a root cap. Embryos of monocotyledons, figure 1.14b, possess only one cotyledon. In the grass family, the cotyledon is called scutellum that is situated towards one side, lateral, of the embryonal axis. At its lower end, 
the embryonal axis has the radical and root cap enclosed in an undifferentiated sheath called gliorrhiza. The portion of the embryonal axis above the level of attachment of scutellum is the epicotyl. Epicotyl has a shoot apex and a few leaf primordia enclosed in a hollow foliar structure, the coleoptil dot soak a few seeds in water, say of wheat, maize, peas, chickpeas ground nut, overnight. Then split the seeds and observe the various parts of the embryo and the seed. 1.4.3 Seed In angiosperms, the seed is the final product of sexual reproduction. It is often described as a fertile yeast ovule. Seeds are formed inside fruits. A seed typically consists of seed coat, S, cotyledon, S, and an embryo axis. The cotyledons, figure 1.15a, of the embryo are simple structures generally thick and swollen due to storage of food reserves as in legumes, dot mature seeds may be non-albuminous or exalbuminous. Non-albuminous seeds have no residual endosperm as it is completely consumed during embryo development, example p, groundnut, dot albuminous seeds retain a part of endosperm as it is not completely used up during embryo development, example wheat, maize, barley, castor, dot occasionally. In some seeds such as black pepper and beet, remnants of nucellus are also persistent. This residual, persistent nucellus is theparisperm. Int gumens of ovules harden as tough protective seed coats, figure 1.15a. The micropile remains as a small pore in the seed coat. This facilitates entry of oxygen and water into the seed during germination. As the seed matures, its water content is reduced and seeds become relatively dry, 10 to 15 percent moisture by mass. The general metabolic activity of the embryo slows down. The embryo may enter a state of inactivity called dormancy or if favorable conditions are available, adequate moisture, oxygen, and suitable temperature, they germinate. As ovules mature into seeds, the ovary develops into a fruit, i.e., the transformation of ovules into seeds and ovary into fruit proceeds simultaneously. The wall of the ovary develops into the wall of fruit called pericarp. The fruits may be fleshy as in guava, orange, mango, etc., or may be dry, as in groundnut, and mustard, etc. Many fruits have evolved mechanisms for dispersal of seeds. Recall the classification of fruits and their dispersal mechanisms that you have studied in an earlier class. Is there any relationship between number of ovules in an ovary and then number of seeds present in a fruit, in most plants? By the time the fruit develops from the ovary, other floral parts degenerate and fall off. However, in a few species such as apple strawberry, cashew, etc., the thalamus also contributes to fruit formation. Such fruits are called false fruits, figure 1.15b. Most fruits however develop only from the ovary and are called true fruits. Although in most of the species, Fruits are the results of fertilization, there are a few species in which fruits develop without fertilization. Such fruits are called parthenocarpic fruits. Banana is one such example. Parthenocarpy can be induced through the application of growth hormones and such fruits are seedless. Seeds offer several advantages to angiosperms. Firstly, since reproductive processes such as pollination and fertilization are independent of water, seed formation is more dependable. Also seeds have better adaptive strategies for dispersal to new habitats and help the species to colonize in other areas. As they have sufficient food reserves, young seedlings are nourished until they are capable of photosynthesis on their own. The hard seed coat provides protection to the young embryo. 
Being products of sexual reproduction, they generate new genetic combinations leading to variations. Seed is the basis of our agriculture. Dehydration and dormancy of mature seeds are crucial for storage of seeds which can be used as food throughout the year and also to raise crop in the next season. Can you imagine agriculture in the absence of seeds, or in the presence of seeds which germinate straight away soon after formation and cannot be stored, how long do the seeds remain alive after they are dispersed? This period again varies greatly. In a few species the seeds lose viability within a few months. Seeds of a large number of species live for several years. Some seeds can remain alive for hundreds of years. There are several records of very old yet viable seeds. The oldest is that of a lupin, Lupinus arcticus excavated from arctic tundra. The seed germinated and flowered after an estimated record of 10,000 years of dormancy. A recent record of 2,000 years old viable seed is of the date palm, Phoenix dactylifera discovered during the archaeological excavation at King Herod's Palace near the Dead Sea. After completing a brief account of sexual reproduction of flowering plants it would be worth attempting to comprehend the enormous reproductive capacity of some flowering plants by asking the following questions, how many eggs are present in an embryo sac? How many embryo sacs are present in an ovule? How many ovules are present in an ovary? How many ovaries are present in a typical flower? How many flowers are present on a tree? And so on, can you think of some plants in which fruits contain very large number of seeds? Orchid fruits are one such category and each fruit contains thousands of tiny seeds. Similar is the case in fruits of some parasitic species such as Orobanch and Striga. Have you seen a tiny seed of ficus? How large is the tree of ficus developed from that tiny seed? How many billions of seeds does each ficus tree produce? Can you imagine any other example in which such a tiny structure can produce such a large biomass over the years? Apomixis and polyembryony Although seeds, in general are the products of fertilization, a few flowering plants such as some species of Asteraceae and grasses, have evolved a special mechanism, to produce seeds without fertilization, called apomixis. What is fruit production without fertilization called? Thus, apomixis is a form of asexual reproduction that mimics sexual reproduction. There are several ways of development of apomictic seeds. In some species, the diploid egg cell is formed without reduction division and develops into the embryo without fertilization. More often, as in many citrus and mango varieties some of the nucellar cells surrounding the embryo sac start dividing, protrude into the embryo sac and develop into the embryos. In such species each ovule contains many embryos. Occurrence of more than one embryo in a seed is referred to as polyembryony. Take out some seeds of orange and squeeze them. Observe the many embryos of different sizes and shapes from each seed. Count the number of embryos in each seed. What would be the genetic nature of apomictic embryos, can they be called clones? Hybrid varieties of several of our food and vegetable crops are being extensively cultivated. Cultivation of hybrids has tremendously increased productivity. One of the problems of hybrids is that hybrid seeds have a toe be produced every year. If the seeds collected from hybrids are sown the plants in the progeny will segregate and do not maintain hybrid characters. Production of hybrid seeds is costly and hence the cost of hybrid seeds become too expensive for the farmers. If these hybrids are made into apomix, there is no segregation of characters in the hybrid progeny. Then the farmers can keep on using the hybrid seeds to raise a crop year after year and he does not have to buy hybrid seeds every year. 
Because of the importance of apomixis in hybrid seed industry active research is going on in many laboratories around the world to understand the genetics of apomixis and to transfer apomictic genes into hybrid varieties. Thanks for watching the video. Please like share and subscribe.